Hi, in this video I am going to talk about the different types of broad categories of machine learning problems that you will come across. The first one is the most popular one which is the regression problem. So the regression problem is, is very simple which is there is a numerical value and given the input you just have to predict that numerical value and a very popular you know, example is predicting the house price you know, given the area of the house the location where the house is located you just have to predict the house price okay so that's basically a regression problem where the output is numerical in, in, in nature okay and then continuous okay it's numerical and continuous in nature classification so this is uh, a problem where you categorize data into few classes you know two or more classes two or more classes okay given the inputs given certain attributes or certain features about the data so your task is to classify into two or more categories an example could be you know classifying uh, your customers um, into default or non default types so a bank is uh, let's say uh, you know lending out loans to customers okay so it, it has to predict whether these customers are going to default on the loan or they are going to be non default on the loan so so how you do is that you just find out uh, the chances of a customer falling into a default or non default category given his income marital status or demography so you're basically classifying into you know two categories default and non default the next one is transcription okay so this is where you know the system is asked to observe uh, unstructured representation of some you know some data and transcribe uh, the same data into some discrete textual form okay um, you know so this is more like you know there is an image and the system will uh, just observe this image okay system will just observe this image and the output will be some ASCII characters okay which will again be used for research okay one example is like uh, so suppose you the system has been given an image of an alphabet okay so the ml system will will simply convert this alphabet which is an image form into different ascii characters okay and then put that in some structure form okay and that's how google street view uses what it does is that it takes the images of different houses and then you know uh, put it in more structure from about the house and street street numbers house and you know street uh, numbers which is more structure from uh, is taken from an image image of the house or image uh, of the given street okay so that's transcription machine translation is the next one so this is where you know a sequence of symbols in some language is converted into another language okay so that you know someone can understand it's like you know converting an english sentence to uh, a french sentence okay with the same meaning okay so that comes under what is known as the natural language processing if you use google translate if you're using uh, google translate uh, you can know that you know if you provide an english sentence it can convert to many other languages such as you know spanish uh, or french or Hindi or you know many other languages okay so that's machine translation structured output so uh, this is one way of performing you know certain machine learning tasks where you know you just provide an image and the output is like a sentence describing the image okay uh, so here is an image which is an input okay and you know the output is this is a cat now this is a grammatically correct sentence this is a cat okay and the output will be uh, you know this the first sentence the first word is a and cat okay now the output there are four outputs okay you give an image and there are four outputs uh, the different section of the output different parts of the output are related and you have to put it in such a way that it's grammatically correct okay and that's how it is called structured output that means the output has to be in certain structure okay it cannot be just randomly it has to be in certain way that means 
it has to be in sequence this is a cat so that you know it, it makes a proper grammatically correct sentence so the different section of the output must be related in some way grammatically okay and you know uh, so there will be a section there will be a section which deals with the verbs the section which deals with prepositions or nouns pronouns and so on okay so that's the way you expect the output to be the program must output several values that you know are tightly interrelated uh, the example could be the words produced by an image captioning the program must valid must form a valid sentence that means if you provide an image you know finds a caption which relates to that image it has to be proper a proper sentence otherwise that won't mean anything so the output has to be more structured form with related uh, you know sections next one is anomaly detection okay uh, well this is part of the supervised learning obviously and uh, in many ways related to classification and regression problem but it is something that is very uh, you know specific or rather different than many other classification regression problems where the idea is to uh, you know find out uh, a very small section of event in your data okay so the machine learning system flags unusual event okay so anomaly itself means that very unusual right so example could be credit card fraud if there are let's say 1 million transaction happening uh, there could be maybe uh, you know maybe 50 transaction that are fraudulent transaction sorry 50, not 50 percent 50 transactions okay then it's just a small section out of a very large section you know that's typical case of anomaly detection which is completely an unusual event based on the description of an event okay so the description of an event could be the input for example transaction amount okay uh, time uh, location um, you know, many things right different channels third party interactions uh, ip address many things can be inputs to this particular type of system and the idea is to find out how a particular transaction particular you know set of information is different from the other set of information so that the bank can put a hold on these transactions and verify manually whether this is a fraudulent transaction or or a not a fraudulent transaction Basic value imputation. This is also type of a machine learning problem where the input data is missing and that need uh, that needs to be replaced with some kind of a information from the other input data. Okay, and missing value imputation um, is also a sub problem in many other type of machine learning uh, algorithms. Right, if you are using a regression or a classification algorithm, there also you need to deal with missing value. Um, of many input variables and you need to use what is known as missing value imputations okay so it's just that you know given information x about a particular feature you should be able to you know replace uh, missing values which are let's let's denote it as x dot so given x one should be able to you know replace with some number x dot okay so such problems are known as missing value imputation and can be dealt with uh, many ML or statistical learning algorithms. Denoising, okay. So this is one type of problem where you need to clean information from uh, corrupted information, okay. So corrupted information would be given and the system has to find out a clean information out of it, okay. So just that, you know, you have to provide uh, you just have, the system has to you know get us the conditional uh, probability of a clean information given the corrupted information okay so it's as simple as that so this is the last one i'm going to talk about this is known as the probability density or probability mass function estimation well in most of the algorithm that we just talked about we actually uh, you know find out uh, we actually estimate the probability density in most cases in fact in all cases so no matter which machine learning algorithm uh, you are going to use you will you will simply be estimating a probability density function or probability mass function 
depending on whether you are dealing with uh, more of a continuous data or discrete data. Um, but such type of algorithm, so this category of algorithm is more exclusive. Okay, so the main motivation is to find out a PMF or a PDF uh, estimation curve. You know, in other algorithms, of course, you do the same thing, but that's not the main purpose or main intention. But here, you learn a PMF or PDF from the given input data, and it's exclusively like you're exclusively finding this out. Okay, and such algorithms can be used in many other things. It can be used for anomaly detection. Uh, it can be used for missing value imputation. So basically, if you know the PDF, the probability distribution, the data generating process of a given data, you simply have to, you know, uh, extrapolate that into your, you know, missing values and find out the missing values there. Okay, so that's the way you can, you know, it, it just fits that same story, right? Um, similarly, the anomaly, if something doesn't fit into the distribution, then it has to be outside of the distribution and can be considered as a, uh, an anomaly, right? So this is a type of algorithm, which is part of most other algorithm, but uh, but when you do it exclusively um, with some intention, then it falls into a category called probability density or probability mass function estimation algorithm. So these are some of the eight to nine, uh, you know, broad categories of ML problems or ML tasks that you can perform using uh, machine learning algorithms.